How's it going, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. Today, we are doing a product review on Arsenal. It's a camera peripheral that has come across my radar recently, and I'm currently looking at the website, so you guys will see it in real time as I sort of break down my thoughts on this product. So... Arsenal seems to be uh, a camera peripheral that mounts to the hot shoe of your camera or your DSLR. And it looks as if this software engineer or this engineer who has developed the device is using this to sort of be an alternative to your camera's automatic mode. And by alternative, um, that's probably an understatement. I think that this product is reaching to be sort of uh, uh, taking the the control or taking the reins with capturing an image. Uh, I watched the um, the product preview video. Um, I'll save my thoughts <laughs> on the music and trying to be hip and sort of get it out there for the youth and all and get them hype about it. But one of the things to me, it looks like this product is just designed to basically just take over for you. If you're a landscape photographer, I don't think that this is necessarily designed because it's not displayed at all in the video. It's not talked about at all in the video to be for your portrait photographers, your wedding photographers, or even your product photographers. This seems like uh, a device designed for landscape photographers specifically and those who are interested in doing uh, landscape time lapses and long exposure styles of photos. Now, time lapses can be um, a unique style of photography slash videography that requires, depending on your camera setup, uh, a timer, sometimes a like a, an adapter or an amount that goes onto your tripod that allows your camera to then pan or move with the scene. Um, this device does not, does not do any panning or moving of your camera, so you'll still need one of those. However, it looks as if it'll go ahead and take over the timing of the time lapse plus via an app it, on your phone, your cell phone, it looks as if it's going to go ahead and give you a real-time preview of what this time lapse is going to look like as it captures it. Now, in the frequently asked questions, they they claim that it's not needed once your time lapse is set up. You can go ahead and turn your phone off. Doesn't look like you're going to need any internet connectivity. I mean, being a landscape photographer, I doubt you're going to have internet connectivity out in the field. However, some cell phones offer a mobile hotspot. Mine does not, so. <laughs> Uh, those of you out there with newer phones, you probably won't have to worry, but it isn't necessary. Uh, another thing is it'll take sharper photos. Uh, one of the things when you're taking landscape photos, uh, you'll want to capture images at different different depths. And that's sort of photo stacking. Uh, you'll do the same when you want to take a, a HDR or high dynamic range image. You'll go ahead and expose for nominal and then you'll underexpose and you'll overexpose and you'll take all three of those images or even more depending on uh, your style of photography you'll take however images necessary to capture the dynamic range within the darks and within the highlights and you'll use a software such as Lightroom or I'm pretty sure there's other softwares out there I'm not uh, too well versed on what they might be but I use Lightroom and with that editing software, you can then select all of the images, stack them on top of one another, and it'll expose across the board, preserving the data and the shadows and the data and the highlights. So it looks as if, as if uh, this device will be able to do that for you in camera. Um, now, there are some cameras that already do this. They'll take an HDR image, so I'm not really sure if, if this device would be necessary. However, again, it's one of the features. The other thing is it'll, 
it'll do like depth of field stacking. So if you have something in the foreground, you'll want to focus for that. But then depending on your focal length or your f-stop, the background may be blown out. So you'll want to then, or blurred out. So you'll want to then focus on the foreground elements, the midground, and then everything in the background. That way, when you go into photo stack again, it takes only the sharp parts of the photo and sort of blends it all together to be one sharp image from foreground to background. Uh, that's really great for landscape photography because usually you have a foreground subject, such as a rock, a flower, whatever it may be, and then you have something uh, typically pretty epic in the background, be it a mountain, waterfall, trees, ocean, whatever, whatever style of landscape photography you do, uh, your background element will reflect that. So it looks as if your device will be able to, this device will be able to do that as well. Um, and it looks as if it'll merge the photos for you as a new raw or JPEG um, seamlessly to the camera's SD card. So I'm curious if, because it, it, it looks as if it plugs in directly to your camera. Um, I don't know if it's like via USB or via HDMI, depending on that. I'm not sure how the, the image must be captured in the camera, piped into the device, and then thrown back into the camera. That's interesting to me. Another thing is it'll do long exposure, so you won't have the need for an ND filter. One of the sort of camera hacks out there is you just take a lot of images of a moving subject or a moving object, such as a tide pool or ocean waves or things like that, and you can stack these images on top of each other, um, I think in Photoshop preferably, and you can then get that motion blur of a long exposure effect um, without the need for ND filters. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't do long exposure photos, so I'm not sure if that's really a good thing or if, if having an ND filter is sort of the tried and true method. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's an interesting device for one. Um, they claim that it searches the internet for images that are currently out there and then gives you, as the photographer, uh, suggestions on settings or gives the camera suggestions on settings based on images of similar subjects. And that's wherein lies my, my gripe about it. So that's sort of the product review. That's what they claim it does. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it comes with. We'll look at the pre-order. So it looks as if you can pre-order this for $175, $10 shipping for a total of $185. To me, that's not bad. For what this device is claiming to do, I think that's okay. $185 for a peripheral. Sometimes people want to get overzealous with their products and say that this is, this is a necessity and they'll charge you an arm and a leg for it. I don't necessarily feel as if a device like this is a necessity. I think that um, it's definitely something that you can have in your bag. But do you need it? No. So $185 is not going to break the bank. And it seems like a pretty fun device if it's going to do the things that it says it's going to do. Now, I know that devices, they, they claim to do what they, what, they, what they say they're going to do. However, in real world applications, I've not seen any reviews yet of anybody with this product in hand. I've only seen the company's video where um, everything is usually under specific sort of um, settings. So you're, you're going to get the outcome that you're, that you're searching for. Um, but I want to go ahead and get into 
my gripes about this. My gripe is that it requires an app on your phone. Um, I don't like that. I prefer just using the camera when I'm out in the field and leaving my phone in my pocket. I want little communication between my workhorse and a device that is not historically very reliable. Applications on cell phones and cell phones in general without updating and all this other stuff, that just, they, it can be a headache. And they say you can take wireless control via your app from up to 100 feet away using the smart assistant AI. So you can set the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, and see a live preview or even trigger the shutter, which is nice if you're taking landscape photos because you don't want to press the shutter on the camera yourself to prevent any excess shake in the image. But relying on an app and having just one more device that you have to ensure that the battery is ready, I think for individuals who are out on a really long hike, getting out in the sticks, or just going on a on an adventure somewhere to capture some really amazing images, um, I don't think they want to have to rely on having too many batteries at the ready. Maybe there are some that do. Maybe other people have had better experiences with the connectivity between their cell phones and other devices like GoPros or even the their Sonys or their Nikon cameras that have Wi-Fi built in. But me personally, I just I feel that I want my camera to just be able to do it or I want the device to just be able to work, sort of plug and play. I don't want to have to go through all of the, I don't know, just the, the, the back and forth of connecting, disconnecting. Um, the other thing that I have against it, uh, it's, it's really just a personal thing. I don't, it's not directed towards the product and what it does in general, the company and what it is they, they plan to achieve. But, um, and, and I may, I'm admitting I I may sound like a hipster here or a purist, but I really feel that there's something lost when you let the device just do or capture the image for you. Now I, I do have a statement that I'll make after this that sort of contradicts what I'm about to say because I, I can see both sides, but I feel that if you are taking a high dynamic range image that most of these cameras can just do that. Now, stacking it post-process is going to save you time if this device is just going to do it for you. Now, I'm curious if you're going to lose those images or if those images are also saved on the memory card because if the device fails or if the battery dies, what happens? Um, for me, if capturing three images that I know I'm going to stack later is saved from the point of shooting to, um, directly to the memory card and it doesn't have to go through any devices to, to stack and then resave, um, I feel as if the images are a little bit safer. So I'm curious as to the file transfer flow and what happens, uh, when you do take a high dynamic range image. Uh, I could be wrong. It could save those three and go ahead and stack them and add it as a fourth. But I've not read anything, at least on their site, or I've not seen anything yet uh, to answer that question. Um, the other thing is when you are sort of capturing an image as the creator or the artist, the photographer, uh, you have it in your mind what you want it to do. And you should have the ability to make the camera capture what it is you want. So when you take that ability away from yourself and then you rely on hardware to do it for you, to you rely on the machine sort of to look at the scene and based on 
machine learning, what's trending on Instagram or what's popular to just produce an image that is just like every other image. So it kind of takes away your ability to be creative. I want to, I want to say, or to try to create something new. And that's one of the things that I do have against this device. I think that it's just a, it's an add on and maybe a step up from every camera's auto feature. Uh, I've heard time and time again about the importance of getting out of auto, uh, learning to shoot manual with your, with your cameras, learning to control what it is you want and achieve the image you want as a photographer. And I think that that's a skill. Um, when you have a device like this, I think it takes that skill away from maybe your more professional photographers, but to sort of, again, go back and contradict everything I just said. I think that this device has a place even for a professional photographer because for me, I find that workflow is important and refining that, refining and sort of leaning out the post-process work. So I mentioned photo stacking. I mentioned creating HDR images. If this device will do it in real time and I don't need to go back to my computer to do that stacking, that just saves me X amount of minutes or depending on how many images, X amount of hours of stacking images, non-creative work. The editing and everything of the image after it's stacked, that's the creative process. But if this will go ahead and stack those images for me, that already is now paying for itself because that's time that doesn't yield value. That's wasted time. It's wasted time to have to stack an image, wait for it, and then work on it. If this device does it in the field and I plug my USB or my memory card into my, my computer and it's already done and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but if it's already done, that's value added right there. That is definitely value added. So that's one thing. And the other thing is being able to see a time lapse in real time. I don't think that's super, like a super necessity. But sometimes these cameras, at least mine, I use the Nikon D500. And that is a set it and you can't change it. At least in my experience with it. Maybe for others out there, they've figured out and looked more into it. I don't do all these time lapses in the world. But if you're, if this smart device is able to change your exposure and your focus and your ISO or just sort of manage all of that on a time lapse to ensure that you get a clean and good looking time lapse, it's money in the bank right there too. Because not every, not every camera, at least I don't think not every camera can do that. Mine, I haven't, I haven't figured that out. If it can, that'd be great. But if doing a night lapse or a time lapse from day to night, um, once, once that transition from daytime exposure to sort of golden hour to sunset to twilight to nighttime, uh, my camera, I've not figured out a way to have that exposure sort of ride that wave and yield an image that is then ready uh, or a time lapse that's then ready after the fact. So if this device will do that, then I think, again, that's that's money in the bank. Um, some people out there, they take time lapse image by image and then they have to go in and post process and stack these images together to then create that time lapse. If this does it for you, that's computer time. That is time you do not need to sit at your computer working 
on that. I consider that to be uh, remedial work. It's not gonna, it's not gonna benefit you. It's kind of you you start it, and while it renders, you walk away and you go make yourself a cup of coffee or something. That process is just worthless. So there, I see value in this product. And the other thing, uh, I guess, finally, the final value I see with this product is again with workflow. Um, there are times where as a creator, as a photographer, we do want that control. But I think that once we've got the image, once we've sort of got that one in the bank and we're just sort of trying things or sort of just out there on the fly, because in the video it does show handheld uh, work. It doesn't all need to be on a tripod. So when I see stuff like that, I think to myself, um, it's better than auto. When you're out there sort of just running and gunning, you don't want to be in manual because, say, I'll use a, a trip I took to the Dominican as, a, as an example. Um, I'm on the back of a truck capturing images as we're driving down the road. Next thing, we're, we're in a small village and I'm capturing portraits of the locals. Then we're in a, like a cocoa forest. I, I don't know if it, it's called a cocoa forest, but where they grow cocoa beans and all that stuff. And so lighting's changed. Subjects have changed. All of these things are different. And for me, I had it in aperture priority mode. I figured I just want this sort of f-stop and let the camera just sort of figure out the rest. But after a bit, I was thinking to myself, maybe auto would be better. Just let the camera kind of figure it out for me and just let me capture the scene and let the camera do the work. So I see value in that just going out and about and sort of on the fly. If you're on your hike and you're seeing images and you're seeing all this other stuff as it's happening, but your main focus is that landscape photo at the end of the hike. Well, you don't want to take the time or maybe you don't have the time to just sit there, set your tripod up, get all the exposures and everything like that. To me with this device, at least in my in my review of what I'm seeing on their, on their website, I, I can imagine you just being able to whip your camera out, snap that image, and just keep going down the road. So it's going to save you time there. It looks as if they've raised quite a bit of money on Kickstarter, uh, quite a bit. It seems like there's, there is a, not a need, but a demand for a product like this. Um, there's other things that I've seen sort of, where is it? On the features page. Um, I think it's the features. Let's see. So apparently there was a Kickstarter price. I'm sorry. Kickstarter was 150 bucks. It looks like the pre-order price is 175. So they, out of 67,000 units, they have 827 left. So apparently people want this. And the retail price on March 2019 will be $250. So, excuse me, based on the features alone that I've read, I think that $175 is a really great price point uh, to pre-order. For $250, that's going to be a no sale for me. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend that much money on it. Um, but that was, that was like a what's in the box, and I can't seem to find that now. Um, oh, here we go. So it's going to connect to most cameras, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, Sony, uh, DSLRs, and mirrorless cameras. They do have a full list on their website. It is with arsenal.com. For those of you guys who are interested in looking at this, it'll work with any iOS 9.0, uh, or later or Android, Android 4.4 smartphones, uh, does smart assistant AI the manual mode to adjust shutter, aperture, ISO, etc. 
um, time lapse mode for advanced control and the hardware. Uh, it connects to a camera via micro USB cable, which is included. Uh, powerful ARM processor. The weight is two ounces. So most of these professional DSLRs are pretty heavy already. So two ounces. Just be ready to build them biceps. It's not a lot of weight, but after hours of handheld, um, you'll feel it. But if again, if it's landscape photography that you're doing, chances are it's just going to be on your tripod anyways. Um, Bluetooth 4.0 and Wi-Fi enabled up to 100 foot wireless range charge while in use. So that's definitely very important if you're doing time lapses, like long time lapses. And it says with any USB compatible battery pack, which is not included. So if you have sort of one of those external battery chargers, looks like you can go ahead and use that. So. The campaign looks like it was started by a man named Ryan. He is the so he is a software developer and an amateur landscape photographer. So he definitely saw a personal need for something like this, and which is usually where some of these things stem from. Not everybody's just sitting around thinking, "How can I get rich quick?" More often than not, we're looking at what it is we're doing and how we can make it easier, or how we can improve upon it for everybody else to make it easy to sort of cut that learning curve. I know that for myself, I sort of had to just go out there, school of hard knocks and figure it out. Now a device like this can cut that learning curve if executed properly and really bring a lot of creatives up in, um, in the caliber of work that they do uh, right out the gate. So that's my review on this. Uh, it looks pretty cool. The video, I wasn't a huge fan of the music or the style of it. I think that they could have got got the point across, maybe uh, cutting the volume on that for a little bit. But um, yeah, if you're a new photographer and you're interested in having a peripheral like this, I would recommend pre-ordering it now because $175 is a pretty good price point. Uh, $250, I think, is too much for me. There's a lot of really great things. I can see myself purchasing for $250. Uh, unfortunately, this is not one of them. Now, when it does come out, I may pick one up just to do a real life product review. Um, but I don't see keeping something like this in my kit. Uh, I, I'm just stacking photos and doing all that stuff manually because I really don't take that many landscape photos anymore. My bread and butter has been portraiture, wedding photos, among other things. If this device would move into that realm and be able to tackle that, um, then I think we'd be talking. Then it would be very interesting. Uh, weddings alone. Your settings, they could be all over the place dependent on if your ceremony indoors, party outdoors, there from the beginning of the day, all until dancing at night, um, shooting in manual, I'm running that dial. I'm inside outside. You gotta you gotta be able to control that camera. So I would be interested if uh, if they ever do an update on a product like this to to work with portraiture, wedding photography, um, things other than landscaping. But for now, it looks like it just does that. And that'll be that. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this review. Um, if you guys like this content or you like what I'm doing here, feel free to subscribe, like, leave a comment, thumbs up, five star. If you're finding me on iTunes, leave a positive review. That'd be great. Uh, other than that, as always, till next time, see ya.